In this video, I want to discuss the influence of the Anabaptist movements of the 16th century on the development of the Bruderhof communities. The Anabaptist movement began at the time of the Reformation. Within the Holy Roman Empire, exploitation of the poor and corruption in the Catholic Church had become unbearable, and the peasants revolted. Most famously, Martin Luther published a list of grievances against the Roman Catholic Church and was excommunicated by the Pope and banished by the Emperor, but the tide could not be stemmed. Across Europe, people were questioning traditionally held beliefs. In Zurich, Switzerland, three young men, Conrad Grebel and Felix Mance, who were university students, and Georg Blaurock, a Catholic priest, began reading the New Testament and trying to make it a practical guide to their lives. They concluded that the baptism they had received as infants within the established church was no baptism at all. Baptism should be a sign of repentance and forgiveness of sins. As a result of this conviction, they baptized one another and commissioned each other to teach others the truth they had discovered. This movement of rebaptism or Anabaptism spread rapidly throughout Switzerland and across Germany and Austria. Hundreds of people were baptized and joined fellowships independent of the established church. Both the government and the church were frightened by this turn of events, and there were concerns of another popular revolt like the Peasants' War of 1524. The authorities forbade the baptism of adults under penalty of death and proceeded to enforce this restriction with vigor. 29-year-old Felix Mance, one of the original group to receive adult baptism, was the first to be captured and executed. He was drowned in the Limat River in Zurich while his mother stood on the shore and encouraged him to remain true to his convictions. Blaurock and Grebo continued to preach until their deaths and Graybell is often regarded as the father of the Anabaptists, a faith tradition that includes both Mennonites, Amish, and Hutterites. Here, I want to focus on the unique development of the Hutterite branch of Anabaptism. Jakob Hutter was a hat maker by trade and also an Anabaptist preacher in the mountains of Tyrol, where he formed several small congregations. Under his leadership, and inspired by the example of the first Christians in Jerusalem, members turned their money over to a common treasury and helped one another in other practical ways as well. Due to increasing persecution in the Tyrol, Hutter traveled to Moravia, today's Czech Republic, in 1533, where a relatively greater degree of freedom in religious matters existed than in other areas in Europe. Other Anabaptists made the long and at times dangerous journey as well, and Hutter united several of these congregations in communal ownership of goods in addition to their Anabaptist belief of nonviolence and adult baptism. Although Hutter himself was captured and burned alive in Innsbruck in 1536, he had returned to Tyrol in 1535, the Hutterites, as they came to be known, survived. For 400 years, they lived in full community of goods despite the times of heavy persecution. They immigrated to the United States and Canada in the 1870s and were almost forgotten in Europe until historians came across some of their writings in museums and archives in the late 19th century. Eberhard Arnold, the Bruderhof's founder, first studied the Anabaptists in 1913. Later, after the founding of Zanerts, when the small group was seeking other movements with similar aims and ideals, they learned that the Hutterite communities were still in existence. They still practiced adult baptism, and they still refused to participate in military service. In fact, two Hutterite men had died as a result of harsh treatment in an American military prison during World War I. The example and continued vibrancy of the Hutterites inspired the fledgling Bruderhof community. In 1930, they sent Eberhardt as a representative to visit the Hutterite communities in America. Eberhardt was particularly inspired by the foundational documents he discovered on his visit, in which church practices and orders were laid out that would be critical as the Bruderhof continued to grow. When Eberhardt returned to Germany in 1931, he brought with him hundreds of these manuscripts, sermons, 
statement of practices and beliefs, and letters written by those killed for their faith, which he also hoped to publish and make available to a wider audience. By connecting with and learning from a movement with centuries of history and experience in communal living, the Bruderhof, now in its 10th year, became more firmly grounded and able to withstand the tests that time would bring.